Have you heard of the tragic artist? Oh, sorry, maybe I should give you some examples. Like maybe Edgar Allan Poe, or Francis Bacon, Keith Haring, Sylvia Plath, Van Gogh. Poe died of alcoholism. Plath killed herself in her kitchen. Van Gogh shot himself in the stomach. Ernest Hemingway shot himself in the head. What are these correlations? The mentally ill dealt with their feelings through their art. Although we have lost many great artists from mental illness and addiction, you have to wonder, if we were to go back in time and help them understand themselves through their art with the added amount of therapy, would they have come to a more peaceful end? Is this how artists escape? And should we use that escape to help the psychological suffering happening all over the world? This is a look at art therapy. Do this. You've reached the confidential voicemail of Jacqueline Tricardo Nicada. Please leave me your name and number, and I will return your call. If this is an emergency, please call 911 or the Mobile Mental Health Crisis Service. And that is 1 888. I'm a senior at Hampton High School and I'm doing my final project on art therapy. Um, okay. I was wondering if Dr. Tundi would be interested in doing a short interview on children and how art therapy might work for them. Okay, what's your name, please? Aaron Cousins. Oh, Aaron, you're the client here, aren't you? Yes, I am, yes. Yeah, okay. So you want to know if you can do a short interview? Can I tell you a secret? Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. Very well. <laughs> I've never made a documentary before and I'm quite scared about it. But like, do you have to write an essay first? I wrote a literature review. Then just base the questions off of that. Grace, did you know that I love you? Nope, not at all. You've never said that before in your life. <laughs> What emotion do you usually steer to when you're making your art? I enjoy um, the way m a lot of my art turns out when the subject matter is more anxious-seeming or kind of fear-based. Yeah. I enjoy things that look scary. Yeah. Do you think it's because you're working through your fears, or playing with your fears, or what's going on there? I enjoy manipulating my negative emotions into something that looks like a visual representation of how I'm feeling. For instance, in some of my pieces, I have a anxiety of people watching me or looking at me, and a lot of my art pieces will have eyeballs in it that look rather macabre in a sense, mm -hmm. and they kind of represent that fear of being watched. It can be therapeutic to visualize your fears or your anxieties, and it's actually very therapeutic for me in this instance to put my negative emotions onto paper as a positive thing. I enjoy mm -hmm. how they look in the end. Yeah. So it's like taking something negative and turning it into something beautiful. Yeah. Or scary. <laughs> In your case, it's scary. I don't think it looks scary. <laughs> exciting. That's exciting. Your mom must be thrilled. Oh, she's oh, so excited. She's thrilled every time I see her, but, you know, she must <laughs> So, can I ask if you had ever studied or what you know about art therapy already? Right. So, um... I mean, we touch on it a little bit in grad school. We touch on, like, the various different types of therapy. Could you explain um, what art therapy is or how it's included in CBT? In CBT? Ah, uh, okay. Well, and like I said, because I'm not a trained art therapist, my answers are going to be different, right? Um, right. Uh, as far as um, what... I do with art therapy and CBT. Um, I use it just as a as a supplement, as a way for clients to express themselves mm -hmm. um, in an alternative way. And I do it with um, only with ther with um, uh, clients that um, 
use art um, as a, a coping skill um, or as a skill that are artistic mm -hmm. because um, I see it as a form of e expression. Um, and CBT is really important um, in when we look at um, how people express their emotions. So if someone is just naturally um, artistic and express their, themselves through um, art, um, then expressing themselves, you know, um, from a psychological point of view, uh, through their art would be very, very therapeutic. It could be calming. It could be relaxing. It also could be um, uh, just another conduit, I guess. Yeah, it's about challenging those faulty cognitions and encouraging um, the client to uh, uh, express themselves, but also to look at their world differently. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And the last question I have for you is just, have you ever used um, art in your life to make it better? I know I've seen your art in your office. Yeah, but... yeah. Yeah, I use art a lot. It's definitely one of my therapy, kind of one of my own personal therapeutic outlets. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, throughout my life, I mean, I've been doing art since I was probably three years old um and there have been times in my life that you know i don't um do it as much but it's always been a big part of my life you felt more connected with your art because you're going through a hard time or felt it was easier to make art because of an emotional time Understanding your own or maybe other people's emotions, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just a really uh, great way to kind of get out some emotions, you know. Um, right. Yeah, to kind of go through some of the really hard, you know, feelings maybe of grief or fear or anger or whatever and just really use color and line and form and to explore that and mm -hmm. uh, and then you know I I not that long ago I guess I really felt that it was hugely helpful in at times to go through all those really dark kind of hard emotions and um, but really necessary a part of life and all of that yeah. to to painting with other colors and moving into peace you know as you kind of got some of those really uncomfortable feelings um, sorted through a bit. You know? I, I just wanted to do this topic because I feel it's a great relief for a lot of people, even if... From the book Artist Therapy by Alan DeBodden and John Armstrong, in the first chapters they talk about hope and art. The most parentially popular category of art is the cheerful, pleasant, and pretty kind. Meadows in spring, the shade of trees on hot summer days, pastoral landscapes, smiling children. This can be deeply troubling to people of taste and intelligence. 
However, these worries are generally misplaced, far from taking too rosy and sentimental a view. Most of the time we suffer from excessive gloom. We are only too aware of the problems and injustices of the world. It's just that we feel debilitatingly small and weak in the face of them. Cheerfulness is an achievement, and hope is something to celebrate. I believe that art and hope goes together nicely, that they fit hand in hand. I believe that we can understand ourselves and each other better if we were to look into our brains and find out all of the weird and wonderful things going on. And that humans, since we are dashingly visual, would do that through art and writing and paper and pen and whatever we can get our hands on. We learned from Sue Hooper that looking back on our past art and our past writing can help us heal and realize who we used to be and how far we have come. Speaking with the counselor from Horizons, Rebecca, made me realize that art therapy might not be such an estranged topic in the world of psychology and sociology today. And I learned from my interview with Grace Forsythe that we can all try to understand each other, our friends, and our own minds through patience and care and being alone with our art. I want to thank everyone that took time out of their day to help with this documentary and it took a lot of time to put together but it was really fun and I really hope I get a good grade. Please pass me Mr. Beer. If you spotted any art throughout the video that you enjoyed or you want to look more into then all of the artists and their channels are featured below. I would like to say thank you for all of the people that I have interviewed and took part and just I really hope you enjoyed it. So yeah that's it. So like always. Bye-bye.